It was a rare event last month, a solar storm that pushed the aurora borealis southward to parts of the country that don't usually get to see the northern lights. It was extraordinary. If you missed it, um, trust me. But here's a few voices of, of what it sounded like as the night sky was painted with shades of pink and purple and green. Streaking in the sky, the whole sky, dancey, dancey, dancey. It's like a starburst. Incredible. Whoa. I just saw these big, like, bright green streaks in the sky, and I just stopped, and I was like, wow. It was wow. like someone said, cue the light show, <laughs> and we had this front row seat to just an amazing spectacle. I, I just kind of laid in the field in a shadow, and I just kind of cried because I was like, wow. Like, wow, a lot of people said that. If you missed the Northern Lights that time around, you might get a chance again soon. Uh, Robin Fiore is a research scientist at the Canadian Hazards Information Service of Natural Resources Canada, specializing in space weather. Robin, good morning. Good morning. Like, wow, does that make sense to you? Uh, it completely makes sense to me. And I was feeling a little bit sad hearing those because it was cloudy here in Ottawa and I wasn't able to see them, but uh, they really are beautiful. For you, when you see them... Um, and I don't know whether you want to even go back to the first time that you saw them, but what was it like? Because it's part of it is what you see, but it also, as we heard, it stirs something in people. It's it's really magical. And these tales and stories and um, descriptions of the Aurora go back for hundreds and hundreds of years, especially in Canada, because our country is so large and just covered with such a, a wide breadth of cultures that uh, we get a lot of really, really interesting stories about them, too. What about for you? Uh, for me, it's just to see the colors. I grew up in Saskatchewan where the skies are very clear and, and very far stretching and you can see them very nicely. And, and the aurora were always very visible there. Um, and so it always reminds me of my childhood. How rare is it to see the lights in, in the south of this country? Well, the aurora are only going to be seen whenever we have strong space weather events coming from the sun. Um, and we, we don't have these strong events that'll push the aurora down to these sub-auroral or, or more southern latitude zones very often. The sun is, um, it's got an 11 year cycle of activity. So we'll have periods of strong activities, lots of space weather events, and then periods of low activity. And it's during that period of solar maximum, which we're in right now, where we're more likely to have solar events that can push the aurora down to these lower latitudes so that more people can see them in these more populated parts of the country. Tell me more about this 11 year cycle and what's going on in the sun that would lead to more of these solar storms. So solar activity and solar eruptions are tending to originate from magnetically complex regions on the sun that we call an active region. And the solar cycle tells us how many sunspots and how many active regions we're going to be seeing on the sun where these um, eruptions could potentially start from. So during a period of low solar activity, we're not seeing a lot of active regions, but during a period of high solar activity, we could see a lot of active regions. And when we have an active region, we could have a solar x-ray flare uh, erupt. So this is an eruption of radiation from the sun, or we could have a coronal mass ejection or a CME, and this is an eruption of particles from the sun. And when those CMEs reach the earth, they can cause, um, you know, a complex series of reactions with our geomagnetic field and also with our upper atmosphere called the ionosphere. And this is what really triggers the aurora and pushes it down to the lower latitudes. It feels like that is happening more now than in recent memory. And it's not just what the, the, the storm at the beginning of May, but last year we saw you know people posting photos of the Northern Lights not just in Canada, but down through the States into, into Texas and Arizona. You would have people in the UK um, putting up those photos on social media as well. Is, is this becoming more frequent? I think it is, but I, I think it's it's partially because of the solar cycle. I mean, we are in a period of max now. The last maximum would have been 10, 11 years ago. And our dependence on technology just in that, you know, 10 year time frame and, and our ability to share things on a more global scale has mm. changed quite a bit with social media. How do you predict? I mean, part of it is, I guess, knowing where that cycle is, but how do you predict when these sorts of eruptions are going to happen so that we might see the evidence of that here on Earth? 
Right now, it's really hard to determine when there's going to be an eruption. But when an eruption does happen, we do have solar telescopes and uh, solar monitors that allow us to actually see the eruption on the sun. And we can make some estimates about what direction it's going to be pointing in. We can make estimates about how fast it's coming towards us. But it, it really isn't until that coronal mass ejection reaches a point about 30 to 60 minutes upstream of the Earth that we have a better idea of how it's going to interact with our geomagnetic field. So we can have a one to three day lead time that something's coming. Um, we can see where it's erupted to tell uh, us exactly how much of that is coming towards the Earth. But it's not until that you know one hour period before it comes that we know exactly how much damage it's going to do once it gets here. Damage is a key thing. And part of it is this is beautiful to look at. There was a piece in the New Yorker, a long story uh, a few months ago about solar storms. And it talked about the disruption to power grids, GPS, communication. If we get a solar storm that is larger than perhaps people expected, what do we need to be thinking about in terms of, yes, it's beautiful to look at, but what might, what else might be coming? And when you use that word damage, what specifically are you talking about? Yeah, so you're completely right. The aurora being seen in places where it's not normally seen tells us that there's something going on. So we can have any anytime we have perturbations in our magnetic field, so our magnetic field fluctuates in response to that CME arriving, it means that um, we could have currents being induced in any kind of long conductor. So that would be like a power system. And that can cause a, a range of effects in the power system from something interesting that the operator is seeing and able to manage to maybe something a little bit more problematic. So in March of 1989, uh, a large um, event ended up causing a big geomagnetic storm on the Earth and caused a power outage of the Hydro-Quebec power system. And that left 6 million people without uh, power for nine hours. So it was pretty significant. We can also have impacts to other technologies. So uh, impacts to power systems can sometimes cause physical damage to the system, but we could also have impacts to systems like um, high frequency communication. So that's used used for ham radio. Uh, it's used for uh, aviation, also used for marine communication, sometimes for emergency response. When we have a strong uh, event at the earth, what happens is our upper part of our atmosphere gets, gets basically thicker and it'll absorb that signal as it's trying to move. So we can't use that for communication. Now, fortunately, that kind of thing uh, doesn't cause damage to any kind of systems. It just uh, stops a signal from moving. But we can also see impacts in systems like uh, GNSS used for navigation and timing. So that's not going to have um, a, a, a um, strong of an impact to, to you and me. So, for example, we, we're, we're getting our position by um, looking at the signal being received from a number of different satellites. If the signal is disrupted for a couple of those satellites, it's going to make our position estimate less accurate. So that's not going to affect, you know, you going for your morning jog, but that could have impacts on systems that require a high level of accuracy, like um, precision farming, for example, mm. when you're looking for centimeter level accuracy. And there's not much you can do about that, right? I mean, as you said, there's very little warning and presumably because we rely so much on that technology that is up uh, above us, it, it, it is vulnerable. Yeah, what it really means is that we have to have um, a really good idea of, of prediction. So we have to be able to develop forecasts that can tell us where these impacts are going to be, exactly how strong is the impact going to be, so we can make sure that we've got some kind of mitigation in place. Even if it's just an, aware, an awareness that, hey, I'm not going to be able to use this type of communication for 45 minutes. You know, don't, don't worry, nothing's wrong with the system, but you, you might just have to wait. Um, I have an, just before I let you go, I have an app on my phone that tells me when the Northern Lights may or may not appear and it kind of buzzes and I don't know whether I trust it or not, but it's certainly, you know, <laughs> it's exciting and it tells you that you might see something. Do we have a sense as to when the next light show might be? Well, right now, the active region that caused the event, May 10th and 11th, uh, has come back around to the Earth. It's been spewing out all sorts of uh, large X-ray flares over the last few days, and it's it's kind of dead center facing the Earth right now. So if there's a big eruption within the next few days, we could see something, uh, you know, in the coming week. Mm -hmm. Exciting. We will look to the sky and hope for clear skies, not clouds, as you had yes. uh, at the beginning <laughs> of May. Robin, thank you very much for this. Uh, great. Thank you. Robin Fiore is a research scientist at the Canadian Hazards Information Service of Natural Resources Canada, specializing in space weather 
and talking about the aurora borealis, which is getting um, more visible in areas that perhaps people have not seen it in the past. If you've seen it and you want to tell us about what you saw, we heard some of the people going like, wow, that's kind of where they were at. Um, you can let us know and we'll cross your fingers and let you know uh, if things are going to be happening, perhaps as she mentioned later on this week when it comes to the aurora.